spent the last 17 years consulting primarily in the hospitality retail restaurant industry on how to build a team of top performers to drive guest service. I got a little crazy about 10 years ago. I became a franchisee of Witch Witch with some of my other counterparts that I used to work with. I, I think they're in Madison. I don't know if they're in any other parts of this country, but anybody ever been to a Witch Witch? Okay, so I, I live in the same world that you do. I own seven restaurants. Uh, let me clarify that. I own five restaurants and two charities, okay? I have seven businesses. That's an Amazon joke. Some of you will get it later today, okay? I got seven restaurants. I live in the same world that you all do. I worked open to close on Saturday two days ago because I had a bunch of people out for spring break. I live in your world. I deal with all the craziness and the zaniness, but we've also put a lot of things together that have helped us drive business volumes in our franchise locations that are 30 to 40% higher than the other franchisees in my markets. I'm in Dallas, I'm in Houston, and I'm in outside of Austin. We have 30 to 40% higher sales volumes. Our comp store trends are typically 2 to 4% better. They're not always up, but they're 2 to 4% better than the other franchisees, and I attribute it to two things. One is we measure guest service, and we have a clear, clear focus on what we do, and the second piece is we know how to hire people. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Now, I've written a couple books. No sense going into that. Uh, she mentioned the company called Pal Sudden Service. This is actually the reason I got back into operations. These guys own 26 1,100 square foot drive through only hamburger places in the eastern part of Tennessee. They serve, they serve hamburgers, hot dogs, shakes, and fries. So if you've been to like a Sonic or, a, you know, it's probably a very, very dumbed down Culver's or something like that, where they have a, a little variety of hamburgers, hot dogs, shakes, and fries, not a crazy menu like a place like Culver's. They have 2% manager turnover, 54% employee turnover. I don't know if you know what your turnover is in your restaurant, but if you have 20 employees and you lose 20 a year, your turnover is 100%. They have 54% employee turnover. If you all ever mailed out the W-2s at the end of your year and you have 20 employees and you mailed out 40 of them, you have 200% manager turnover. They make one mistake every 3,600 orders. They make their employees wear slacks and button-down shirts not too dissimilar to what I am doing, and they push 200 cars an hour through a single lane drive through McDonald's probably does 60 or 70. I guarantee you they don't do one mistake every 3,600 orders. Chick-fil-A, which is really kind of the leader, the big company that leads this, they run around 75 to 80 cars through. 200 cars an hour. You pay and get your food at an average of 18 seconds. I talk about this company and they actually have a business excellence institute. I did a bunch of work with them starting in 2005. They broke the ceiling on what I thought was possible in how to run a business. They run 26 restaurants doing a million six on a $4.80 check average. No corporate personnel whatsoever other than the founder, the president, and a receptionist. There's no training department, there's no HR department, there's no accounting department. Their GMs do everything or it's outsourced. Imagine running a business, 26 units with no overhead. Very, very, very profitable but you have to have an incredibly trained staff and GMs and managers to do that. So here's what I've learned over all these years, 18 years at Chuck E. Cheese, a year of rehab, 17 years consulting, being a franchisee for 10 years. Here's the secret formula, all right? Now I know all you guys wanna write this down right now because that is this formula. If anybody wants the notes, I'll just send me an email at the end of the session, I'll send you a PDF of the handouts, okay? So take your pictures, feel free. If you want the handouts, I'll send you a PDF. Oh, and by the way, um, you guys got, did everybody get the surveys? I know we probably ran out, but uh, I'm really all about service. So in, in really helping you all serve better, um, I've got a whole bunch of these that are completed already. So if you guys want these at the end where you don't even have to fill them out, just come and see me afterwards. We'll give those to you, okay? I, I'm all about you. It's, it's your conference. I want to make it easy for you. I'm going to actually boil it down to three things. There are three keys to building a team of top performers. And I know this sounds very simple. It's simple, but it's not easy. Hire, train, and, re and reward. It's real simple. I'm going to use the analogy of fishing. Is there a lake somewhere around here or a river? <laughs> is there somewhere? The Great Lake? What is it? What lake is it? Michigan. Okay. So there's Lake Michigan out here. I want to go catch a shark. Recruiting is very, very similar to fishing. If I want to go catch a shark, can I go out into Lake Michigan and catch a shark? No. If I, if I fish really hard, long time, put a bunch of hooks in the water, will I ever catch what I'm looking for? Absolutely not. Yet when we recruit, 
we take the same approach. We, we really just kind of go out into Lake Michigan and say, I want to hire people. And then when we get them, we don't know why we didn't catch what we were looking for. So I want to go through using the analogy of fishing to teach you how to recruit. Because if I need to catch a shark, where is the first place I must go? I need to go into salt water. Now, I go out into the ocean. There's not an ocean around here anywhere. There's not, very, there's one, not one close to me in Dallas either. But if I go to the Gulf of Mexico where I am, or if I go out to the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific, wherever it is, I stare at this big ocean. Have I increased my odds that I will catch a shark? Yes. Is it still going to be very difficult? Yes. So what else do I need to do to catch a shark? What else do I need to do to improve my chances? I need to put some bait out there. What else do I need to do? This is the part where you guys talk. What else do I need to do? Maybe a little bit of I may need a boat. What? You may need a little research to find out what they eat. I may need a little research to find out what they eat. I've got to put the right bait out there. I've got to go to, the, are there certain areas? Think about that big ocean. Recruiting is the same way. If you want to go catch a chef, a cook, a bartender, a server, or a cashier, it's no different than fishing. I've got to know where to go. I, know, I need to know where to hang out. I need to know what will attract them, throw some chum in the water to get them to come closer to me so I can catch them and improve my odds. I need to fish when the fish are biting, so I need to fish at the right time, I need to fish in the right place, and I need to put a ton of hooks in the water. So that's what we're gonna do today. But let's, let's, I wanna put you guys to a second little test here today. So everybody just close your eyes real quick, close your eyes, and just point what direction you believe north is. So just hint, it's not straight up in the air, okay? It's not straight up in the air, it's not up. Everybody point what direction you believe north is. All right, keep your arms pointed where they are and open your eyes. Where are we pointing? All over the place. North is this direction, okay? Not that it matters, but we're pointing all over the place. My point to the direction is you have to have everybody understand what your true north is for your business. So as an example, in my case with Witch Witch, if you've never been there, it's crazy. There's 47 different sandwiches. There's a bag that you fill out that's got 52 toppings in it. So when the guests walk in there for the first time, what do I hear a lot? Holy crap. Oh my God, what do I do here? This is so confusing. This is so different than every other sandwich place I've ever been into. We heard the word wow a lot. So our true north as a brand for us, for our franchise group became make the guests say wow. I want the guests to say, wow, your employees are friendly. Wow, this menu is pretty cool. Wow, I don't know what drugs you give your employees, but keep doing that. That's what we did when we built our business around our true north, which is make the guests say wow. If you don't have that for your company, you don't know who you're going to hire to fit in, that'll be your shark. You have to have that little service mantra. And as an example for the business case, when we look at our surveys, we do surveys on our receipts just like you could do them in any of your restaurants. The guests give us surveys. We look at the data. When they give us a five on employee friendliness versus a four on employee friendliness, 91% of the people that give us a five on employee friendliness give us a five on the taste of the food. When they give us a four on employee friendliness, 37% of the people give us a five on the taste of the food. Now, if you're in the back of the house, you work in the kitchen, you're a chef, I hate to break this to you. That service staff or that cashier staff or that person working the drive-thru, they're driving the quality of your food in the eyes of the guest more so than you are with putting the food out of the kitchen. This is why we perform better than most of the other restaurant franchises in our segment around where we are. Because our employees not only have to be friendly, they have to be ultra friendly. And I would also urge you, create that mantra, make the guests say, wow, Chuck E. Cheese was every guest leaves happy. Everybody has something like that. If you don't, you need to create one. But what you need to then do is make sure every interaction, the product, the facility, the people, make the guests say, wow, or whatever your mantra is. As an example, I was speaking a couple a couple months ago down in the Dominican Republic at a Hard Rock Hotel. Now I walk out to the pool and I see this on the way to the pool. Now that is absolutely the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> Except what's the Hard Rock all about? They are all about rock and roll. And what were people doing as they left, the, as they were walking out toward the pool area, they're grabbing the guitar and they're doing their favorite thing. This is so stupid. Now I'm not saying put this in your restaurant because it won't fit. But your product and your facility and your people all need to reinforce the mantra. When you walk out of a restroom, the men's room in my restaurant, and again, we're a little 1,600 square foot sandwich shop, so I have a, 
you know, single stall, or single for the men and the women. But when the men walk out, on the back of the door in my restaurants, the restroom door, it says, should I shake your hand? Now think about that for just a second, okay? <laughs> I only put it in the men's room because I know ladies, you all wash your hands all the time. I would love to have a camera in there. I know I can't. But I guarantee you there's a guy that just goes to the restroom, starts to walk out the door, sees the sign, sees his wife nagging him, and goes back and washes his hand. I want them to say wow whenever they interact with us. And to do that, we have to have a higher level of person. One of my clients, this is the men's room in St. Louis. You walk in the men's room, it says blah doesn't make a lot of sense until you turn around and look at the ladies' room door. And this is what the ladies' room door looks like. We're trying to build great guest service, and we have to have the right people. How many of you all are in the quick service, fast casual side of the business? Just a few, most of you guys in the full service side of the room, yes? Any of you guys don't know what, what you're doing here at all? Okay. <laughs> There's a John Deere ad that says it's not how fast you mow, it's how well you mow fast. It's not how fast you mow, it's how well you mow fast. Now, fast, QSR, fast casual, fast means speed. Drive through, fast means speed. Right and wrong, or right or wrong versus fast and slow is critical to the guests. They want it right and they want it quick. Now on the full service side, it means timely. The number two driver of guest frequency after employee friendliness is timeliness of the experience. It's not speed in full service, it's timely. We all know that. The appetizer's gotta arrive at the right time, the check's gotta be dropped at the right time. To, to really help your employees perform at a higher level, you have to put systems into place. PALS has a system for everything. They can even tell you how many pens or pencils are the ideal amount to have in the restaurant. They studied the car manufacturing just in time. They don't waste any money on excess inventory. They don't tie up their cash. You have to have a system for everything. I'll give you a full service example of how you can take ordinary people and do extraordinary things. We did this in a full service restaurant. We had the, the hosts talk to the guests on the way to the table. They would then put a code up in the upper right corner of the guest check, put it face down on the table. The server would come up, grab the guest check. They all now know how to deliver customized service to the guests. So as an example, if I walk up as a server, I don't say, hey, I'm TJ, I'll be your server tonight. I look at the, the guest check and if it says C1, they're celebrating and they've never been here before. So how do I greet the guest at that point? Hey, what are you guys celebrating? Thanks for picking us. I guess you've never been here before. Let me tell you how we can make this a great experience. We have B for been a while, because what we found after that, uh, we started doing this, employees came, but there's people that have been here before, but they haven't been in a long time. So we created been a while, because what we found was the guests had had a ex negative experience or an average experience, and they haven't been in a while. That gave the managers the opportunities to go up there and talk to the guests. Same servers, same hosts, pre-system, post-system. What do you think happened to the guest survey scores in this restaurant chain? Shot up. What do you think happened to the server's tip percentages? Way up. The average server went from making 18% to 22%. A simple system with the same people. In my restaurants, when you come in, it's which, which first time experience, very difficult, it's confusing, it's so counterintuitive every, to every other sandwich chain, we put a system in. We put a little one sticker on the bag. The guest, the guest walks up to the register. When the cashier sees a one sticker on the bag, she says, oh, you've never been here before? Great, you get a free large collector's cup. You can bring it back for discounted refills. I'm automatically enrolling you in our loyalty program so you can earn free witches. Boom, what'd the guest say? Wow. We actually make the food from the bag. Now, if you don't, you could just put a button on the register that prints in the kitchen ticket that says one for first timer. What does that allow the managers to do? Go out there and connect with the guest. What does it tell the kitchen staff to do? Put a little of this in there. Put a little of this in there. Yes, you're supposed to make the food right for everybody, but, but put a little extra in there. What do you think happened to our survey scores of first timers when we put this system in? Shot up from 67% uh, to 80% giving us a five. That's huge, because now they leave here and instead of going, man, that witch witch place is confusing, they love it. And it fits right into our mantra of make the guests say wow. So step one, build systems around your mantra. Make it easy for your employees to do the job at a high level. Systems help ordinary people do extraordinary things. So if we can have great systems with great people, that's the magic formula. So let's figure out where to hire these folks. 
Let's hire the right people. I want to go catch a shark. The first thing we need to do is know what we want to catch. Now, how many of you all know who won the Super Bowl? A couple months, who won? The Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I live in Dallas. I, I could either root for the Eagles or I could root for the Patriots. I don't know what's worse, rooting for the arch enemy or rooting for the team that wins all the time, right? But 31 teams didn't win the Super Bowl. So what do all the teams do that didn't win the Super Bowl? We have to figure out what we need to do to get better. Oh, by the way, how many Packer fans are here? Hey, we won the game according to the NFL three years ago. It was a catch. Come on. <laughs> Stupid people in Dallas are all, that's all we're complaining about what happened three years ago. All right, like I always used to tell my son, don't leave it in the hands of the referee. Just make sure there's no doubt who wins the game. But we want to go higher. We, we need to improve our team in the NFL. How do they improve their team? How can you get better as a pro sports or pro football team? How do you get better? You, you can attract more people to come play for your team through free agency, or you could trade. I wish we could trade in the restaurant industry. I would love to just walk in a Chick-fil-A and give this employee to them and get that employee. We, we just can't do that. They can trade, they can do free agents, or they can actually draft people. Now, when they go to draft people, every team needs a different set of, some have a hole with linebacker and offensive linemen. Some people need a quarterback. Some teams are just like the Cleveland Browns and can't do anything right. You guys know those, right? They're one in 31 the last two years. They get the number one pick every year. It still doesn't matter. You have to have a culture and an organization of winning with systems in place. Now, if I need a quarterback, do they have a different skill set than an offensive lineman? Sure. Think about all the positions you need to hire because you need to catch a shark. I need to catch this kind of person, that kind of person. I need a cook. I need a cashier. I need a bartender. I need, you name it, just pick the position. They have different skill sets. If you were in Eric's session, you talked about the seven skills that were there. I would all, I'll take that down to another level because too often we all just say, I need three people and we go hire three people. Do you need nights? Do you need weekends? What is the DNA of a great server versus an average server. You know, what do they have? Because you need to understand the profile of each one of your positions, recruit for that, and then you gotta interview for that. If you're just out there saying, I need to hire people, the chances are you're not gonna hire what they want with what you need, and you have to match those things. As an example, I would urge all of you to put it together a manpower plan. We do this in our restaurants, we make the managers grade all the employees A, B, or C. A is my rock star. B is the person that I call who's closing tonight. They walk in the restaurant every day and they say, hey, who's, who's closing tonight? And what that means is if the manager's with high standards there, they'll behave like that. Manager with low standards there, they'll behave like that as well. C player is the person, you know who they are. They're the person that could win the lottery and they would complain they had to pay taxes on it. <laughs> you know who they are. They are the ones that gripe and moan, and I will tell you this, the C players never quit because you let them stay there. They, let the, they slack. I would urge you, and I'm a business owner, I own seven restaurants as well, I will run short-staffed and pay overtime all day long versus keeping C players because all you're doing is impacting the guest experience and costing yourself more money down the road. It's cheaper to pay overtime an A and B player than it is to keep a C. Applebee's did a study. They actually make money when they fire C managers because the C managers inflict so much damage on their business. Now, my last column over there says potential turnover. A lot of my C players are potential turnover. I do have some C players. They're brand new. They're slow. They're, they're hopefully going to move up the chart, but they're new. They're a C because they're brand new. So not every C player for me is a potential turnover, but I also see things like what happens in the end of the summertime when everybody goes off to college and then the, you're sitting there saying, oh my gosh, I have eight holes, nine holes, 10 holes, what happened? You knew that in May, get ahead of the curve. Plan your manpower. If you're a seasonal business, it just gets ramped up and then it gets ramped down. You take the same approach. It's just not quite so calm and easy like most other places. Rate your employees A, B, or C. If you have multiple managers, each of you grade them independently because I think one of the things I see in the business more often than not is manager, manager one thinks somebody's an A, manager two thinks they're a B, manager three thinks they're a C, and the employee's very confused. They will work differently for each of the different managers, not because of them, but because of the managers. Get everybody on the same page. Get everybody pointing north. 
Get everybody on the, on the same sheet of music so we understand. So go through that. Now in this case, if I had 40 ideal, my ideal staffing is 40, and I have a current staff of 35, how many people do I need to hire? Okay, where'd you get eight? Is that? Okay. Yeah, so it's not five. But if I have 100% turnover in my business, which in the QSR industry, the average is more around 150, in the full service, more around 120. But if I have 100% turnover and I have 40 employees as my ideal staff, every three months I'm going to lose 10 people. So not only do I need to hire the five that I'm short today, I need to hire my next 90 days worth of turnover. If I need to hire 15 people every quarter, holy cow, that's all you're going to be doing. Have a plan. Know what the DNA is of that great server, that great bartender, that great cook. But know how many you need. Because now I need to go out and go fishing. If I need a cook, I may look in one place. If I need a server, I may look in another place. So we need to figure out where to fish. These are fishing guides around, you can't read it up there, but around Florida. And there's different kinds of fish, and you fish at different time, and you use different bait. Your recruiting message has to be different based on what you need. Okay, so let's go fishing. How many of you all use these typical job boards to help hire people? Craigslist. How many of you all have used Craigslist? Do you like it or not? You don't, it doesn't work anymore. Oh, it doesn't work. Using Craigslist is like throwing a net out if I'm trying to catch a shark. I'm going to just scoop up everything in that net. What do I have to, pardon the pun, fish through when I pull that net into my boat? boots and cans and a bunch of garbage and a bunch of fish that I want, wasn't trying to catch, a bunch of people that don't live anywhere within a thousand miles of where I am, but they applied anyway. Don't ask me why they do that. I would love to just call one of them up and go, Scooter, did you think I'm going to pay your relocation to come down here and be a cashier for $10 an hour? I don't know what they're thinking. A couple things about Craigslist. One, I'll tell you in a little while how to make it more effective. Second, though, the number one day that people look for jobs on Craigslist is Saturday morning. If you put your ad up on Tuesday, what happens between Tuesday and Saturday? Everybody else puts their ads up, and what happens to yours? It gets pushed down. If you're going to use Craigslist, put the ads up on Friday night, put it up on Saturday morning. You have a better chance to be on page one based on when you place the Craigslist ad. And I'll tell you another hint to do with that after. How many of you all do now hiring banners? I see this all the time in the restaurant industry. Now hiring, now hiring. What does this tell the guests? Please give us your money. We don't have enough people here, right? But please give us your money. Be careful with the message we put out there. Ultimately, though, the guest, who knows better than the guest what they want to be served by? They, they should be able to tell us the kind of person they want to be served by. So I'll tell you how to leverage that a little bit differently than just putting up these desperation banners especially when our morons can't spell. I bet Toys R Us is probably about to put these going out of business, now hiring signs up this week based on what I've read about them, right? So let's go out there and fish. If I needed to hire Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hang out? They hang out in the sewer. So if I was going to place a recruitment ad to hire Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where would I put the ad? I would put it on the pizza restaurants, yeah, not a bad place. Or I would put it on the entrance to the sewer. Now, I'm, please, don't leave here and on your survey say, the guy told me to put recruitment ads on sewer drain covers. That's not what I'm telling you. But if I needed to hire Ninja Turtles, that's where I would be. Last week, I was in Kansas City talking to a construction company, and I said, where do the good applicants hang out? And they said, the bars, Home Depot. I mean, when you're hiring construction workers, that's where they hang out. We're trying to hire good cooks, good servers, delivery drivers. Bart, whatever it is, where do they hang out? So let's go through some of these things. One, you've got these hiring sites out there. Two, here's a number of, of ones that work quite effectively. There's a little bit of investment, but if you think about uh, Snag a Job, Career Plug, HireWire, so, uh, Talent Reef, there's a lot of these things that place ads. Most of them are tied into all the other job boards. I will tell you, if you haven't seen it already, our industry is becoming Uberized. Shift Gig is a perfect uh, example of what some of the companies are doing to take temp agencies, which we may or may not have hired. But if I have an event as an example, I have a big catering week coming up in one of my restaurants. I, I literally do $4,000 worth of catering. I need eight more employees for three days and that's it. Shift Gig is just like Uber. 
except they vet everybody for me. It's not like a temp agency where I pay 50%, I pray the guy is not drunk and you know, got a police record and all those other kind of things. They vet the employees and they just click, I want to work today, I don't want to work today. I want to work these three, just like Uber drivers. This is coming to our industry already and they vet them. Again, it's a, it's a potential way to help you guys get through some events if you have some of these seasonality and those kind of things. You need to be out there. If you fish once a year, what are your chances of catching a shark versus somebody that's out there every day? They're minimal. You have to be recruiting all the time. You have to have hooks in the water all the time. You have to have a presence on these job boards because if you don't, the applicant may or may not ever see you. Or if they see you once in a blue moon, they may not know who you are. It's, it's a little bit different than the old days where you didn't want to put a now hiring banner out all the time because you didn't want to send that message to the guest. This is more like marketing, and it's definitely like fishing. The more hooks you have in the water, the better your chances are. Now, how many of you all have ever tried fishing internally? Employment bonuses. Let them use their social media friends and followers and fans and all those things. This is a company in Denver. $200 a referral bonus for an employee, $100 of it paid after six weeks, another $100 paid after six months. $200. Now, a lot of us may choke on $200. You place five Craigslist ads, that's $225, and you're rolling the dice. Look at where you spend your recruiting budget, because when we turn over people, it's not just like a line on the P&L that says, John Smith, $500. It's a little bit of uniforms here, it's labor there, it's training there, it's orientation time, it's interviewing time. It's hidden in your P&L and you can't see it. Understand those costs. It's cheaper to find a new employee than, than keep a bad employee. But you just don't see it on the P&L because it's hidden all over the place. So look at how you could do this for internal. This is a system I started using, I saw this at the National Restaurant Show a year and a half ago. It's called Apply on the Go. You could probably knock this off for free. Please don't tell this vendor I told you that, but uh, I, please just, you could knock this off. I want my guests to apply, but I don't want to put a now hiring banner in here. So we have these little cards. I'll show it to you on, on a couple slides later. There's a QR code or just a, we, a web site that they can go to and apply. It's very simple, four, five, six questions. Now when they do that, they get a text or an email back that says, please complete the rest of the smart hiring restaurant group hiring process by clicking on this link here because I actually make them take a 15 minute assessment. I don't leave hiring in the hands of my managers because everybody hires with a gut feel and they're not very good at it. I don't care if you think you are. What I learned from pals is take the assessment. Just, it's just like what Eric said before. They have tests out there that will nail those seven traits. For $59, $69, $79 a month, I would much rather do that than have everybody hired on gut feel. What I found with these is I get a lot of applications from part-timers, which is fine with me, but the, the kids would apply and I would say, oh, I saw you applied from our cards that were in the restaurant. Oh yeah, my mom eats here, said I needed to get a job. Oh, I babysit for so-and-so X and she knew I was looking for another job. So what happens? I am putting a hook in the water that a guest is now putting more hooks in the water for me. I also carry these cards around, which I'll show you in a second because I use them for another system. Cheap way to do this. Again, you don't have to subscribe to this and pay a monthly fee. You could do this yourself. I was in Buffalo Wild Wings not too long ago. This was a sticker in the mirror, on the mirror in the men's room. This was the, one of the most creative recruiting ads I've ever seen because who are they trying to hire? They're trying to hire their guests. People that like being beer, wings, and sports. And if you like beer, wings, and sports, and you happen to go to Buffalo Wild Wings, you probably go to the bathroom if you have enough beer. And hopefully you wash your hands. And this is a sticker on the mirror in the men's room. Genius. Oh, by the way, it also gets past the health department as well, because we're telling our employees to wash their hands. Unique, creative way to get your message out. Now this happened to me at my mall food court store. I have a phenomenal cashier. He is awesome. And one day he comes up to me and he gives me this card from the Apple store that somebody gave them when they were eating in our restaurant the day before. And it says on the front, you're amazing, we should talk. And on the back of the card, it talks about how awesome your customer service was. You're the kind of person that would fit in at Apple. They're not looking for people to work at the Genius Bar this way. Who are they looking for? They're looking for the people out front that need to tell all of us when we go in the Apple store that you're going to have to wait for three days to get somebody to talk to you, right? That's what they're looking for. 
So we took our apply on the go cards and I give them to all my managers. We have them in our pocket all the time. Because again, when the fish swims up to your boat and you weren't ready and you don't have the fish with the, the fishing reel with the hook in the water, what happens? What does the fish do? Swims away. You have to have the tool ready available. So if I walked into a bank or a retail store or anywhere and they, I see somebody with great service, I'm like, oh, awesome. I know you're happy here, but you know what? Hey, if you have any friends just like you, please give them this card. Now, what am I telling this person here? Come work for me. Come work for me. I'm not telling them blatantly, oh, how much do you make here? $8.50? Okay, I'll pay $8.75. Come work for me. You're just hiring somebody for money, and you know when you hire people just for money, what are they always going to keep chasing? Money. And they're going to leave, and they're going to say they left for more money. But you have to have these tools ready for you. I would urge all of you to try job fairs and go into the schools especially if you need part-time help or go to the culinary schools if you need back of the house or try doing an internship to just kind of create a pipeline of candidates for you. Now, when I go into the schools, I don't just go in there and say, hey, I need to hire three people. I go in there and I say, hey, can I come and talk to your class as a guest speaker? Because I want to talk to this generation about what it takes, you know, what, what it's like to interview from our side, what it's like to be a business owner. Nobody wants to get in the restaurant industry as a career when they're 16 years old. But if I can talk to them about it, I'm giving something to the teacher or the counselor that hopefully then they'll start pushing people my way. I've been in a number of high school job fairs where you literally at the, at the stage in the cafeteria, us, Whataburger, Chick-fil-A, a bank, a tanning place, we are sitting there during lunch, thousands of kids eating lunch. And they get on the PA system and announce all the companies that are up there, hey, come support them. What does that do? It's like, just drop me in the shark infested waters and let me start pulling them out. You got to have some swag. You got to have some giveaway stuff. It was hilarious because I'm standing next to a Chick-fil-A and they're giving out a six page application. I'm giving out a business card that says, click on this QR code or this link and four questions later, I can be emailing you an interview in this afternoon. Because what happens when you're fishing and the, you get a little nibble on the line. What are you supposed to do? You got to set the hook. You got to pull that thing back, get that hook in that fish's mouth and reel it in. You have to be fast. You got to have the right bait on the right size hook and get them in. I've learned a lot. This younger generation doesn't answer email. I'll get a kid that'll apply. I email them back. I never hear from them. Fish got away. They all answer texts. I can show you on my phone, we use CareerPlug now. I've used Snagajob for 15 years. I just switched to CareerPlug. I've probably gotten four applications this morning while I'm sitting here waiting for this session to start. And all I'm doing is texting everybody back, hey, I'm going to be in your restaurant on Wednesday, Thursday, whenever it is. Can you interview then? Boom. You got to get the hook in the water and you got to reel it in. So you always have to be ready. Social recruiting is a thing you may or may not ever do. It's, it's beyond just, hey, tell my, my employees to post on Facebook. Now, I did this in a seminar a couple weeks ago, and some smart ass says, oh, TJ, this works real well. You have one follower. I have one follower. Whew. How's this going to work? Now, those of you all that are a little bit younger than me, I know you follow people, you follow companies, but what else do most people follow on Twitter? Hashtags. Hashtags is where the magic is. So as an example, it's a little bit hard to see because it's yellow on white. Hashtag hospitality, hashtag New Braunfels jobs. There are, there are hashtags that work that you can spend zero dollars. Just start a Twitter account, put these hashtags out there, people will find you. They may not know which which from a hole in the wall. They may not know your restaurant from a hole in the wall. But when they see these hashtags, it gets people inquisitive. Now, the hard part is to tell a story, and this is the second part of what I was telling you about Craigslist. If you look down there, there's a, there's a link in these ads, and there's a link in our Craigslist ads. The links go to video screens. They'll go to a video, whether it's on YouTube or on your website, or your, you can have a career page on your Twitter or Facebook or your website. Raising Cane's is a brand in Texas that has done a phenomenal job with employer branding. So if you can imagine, they come up to an area where they're, they go out to California, nobody knows who Raising Cane's is. They start doing all this social recruiting about Raising Cane's, and when they click on the links, it takes them to a video. Raising Cane's, your questions are answered. A day in the life of Raising Cane's. Chipotle does a phenomenal job. Panera, 
They do great jobs with this where people go on there and you could click on this Facebook page as an example for Chipotle careers. And you scroll down and there's a kid talking that says, I started with Chipotle two years ago, I was making $10 an hour wrapping burritos, now I'm making six digits running this restaurant. That is a powerful, powerful piece of bait to get people to come and work for you. It's so hard in a Craigslist ad or in a, in a tweet to get people to understand. Use LinkedIn, put little videos in there. They gotta be short, but video gets you higher up on the search engines as well. Have the videos be filmed in real time with somebody with an iPhone, peer to peer, looks way better than highly polished, produced corporate stuff because kids hate that nowadays. They wanna see genuine. If you don't know how to do it, I guarantee you have some employees that could do this for you. Tomorrow. You don't even have to have a website. Just sign up for a free account with Amazon Web Services and host all the videos there and just let them click, up, click on the link. This can be done for no dollars. You'll look awesome. You can tell your story. Huge way to get the right people there. So that's where all the employees potentially are hanging out. Let's talk about how we reel them in. If you have to do ads, they need to be eye-catching. They need to be compelling for that person. Why would they want to come and work for you? It's kind of like if I go out in the boat and I want to catch a shark, the first thing I do is throw the chum over the side of the boat. I throw blood over because what, what are we trying to catch? Sharks. What attracts sharks? Blood. Let's put some blood in the water. So here's a couple of uh, ads. As an example, would this attract the right kind of person? Now hiring full-time losers. Not part-time losers, full-time losers. What letter may be missing from the sign? C, right? Closers. This one right here. I know none of you all would ever put these signs up. I know nobody would ever put these signs up in front of your restaurant, but if you have C players working for you, you might as well just put this up because if a potential applicant comes in and they are, they are served by one of your C player losers, they're never going to think about working for you. They will select out of applying at your business because of the people that they see. They'll sit there and go, I don't want to work there. Look at that moron. I don't want to go work with them. Get rid of the C players. They cost you a ton, not only with the guests, but potential applicants. Now, is this an eye-catching ad? If you wanted to be a school bus driver, and please don't say, TJ told me to put my ads on the side of school buses. That's not what I'm saying here. Is this a compelling eye-catching ad? Now hiring school bus drivers versus make $16.25 an hour doing what most parents do for free or you'll never take your work home with you. In fact, it would be illegal. <laughs> this is a little more eye-catching, isn't it? Hitchhiker to Jacksonville. Hitchhiker to Moms for Christmas. Which one's a little more eye-catching? Now again, I'm not saying pick up hitchhikers to solve your recruiting problems, okay? I just want to be clear. You have to have compelling messages. I saw this in a Chick-fil-A outside of Waco, Texas. My son goes to Baylor. And I stopped on my way to Austin to see him a couple weeks ago. And I'm going into the vestibule of the, of the restroom area, and they have this sign on the table. And to me, there's two things that are very compelling about this. It says, now investing, not now hiring, now investing in hospitality professionals. You want professionals? I heard Eric use the word this morning. We want to hire professionals. This has a much different message to the person than now hiring. They're not looking for that loser cashier that works in the fast food place down the street that makes $8 an hour that they're going to pay $12 an hour to. They're looking for people that say, wow, they're investing a professional. It elevates the message. So think about how you can do that a little differently. Now, this one, next one wouldn't work in the restaurant industry, but it'll kind of lead me into something a little bit later. How can you apply to this computer engineering job? What are they looking for? Problem solver? You gotta be able to solve the problem just to call them to apply. So think about how you could use this approach as an example. If I wanna find somebody that can work in my kitchen, I would probably have them. I would do a job fair and say, everybody come in and cook me your favorite dish. We're gonna have a job fair. Same thing as this. We're looking for somebody a little different. We're looking for somebody a cut above. So. We've got our ads out there. We've got them all in the right places. Now we've got to reel them in. We've got to interview them. I could do a whole session on interviewing because I used to be terrible at it. Many managers that I see are horrible at it because the minute somebody walks in, 
with a great feel, gut feel, they just they want it to work. Or we're so short staffed that it's about this difficult to come and work for our restaurant. We're so short staffed that this is the criteria, right? Can you close tonight? Can you breathe? We do this all, I've done it. We all do this. You know what it's like to be sitting there and just had your butt beat for two weeks. You're working open to close and you're short staffed and somebody walks in and you're like, all right, good enough, good enough. And what happens every time we make that decision? Yeah, they, we, they're not there that long. Now, what happens if this person walks into your restaurant today and says, oh, are you hiring? What are most of your managers saying? When can you start, right? When you have a good first impression, a good gut feel, what are your questions like when you want this person to work? Easy, we're just tossing them softballs. Oh, you're, you're, you come to work all the time, right? Yeah, you, you're good at suggestive selling, right? What am I doing when I'm asking questions like that? I'm, I'm answering them for me because I'm getting the answer that I want to convince this that this is right. This is why I use an assessment. I don't let my managers do this. That 15 minute qu questionnaire will give me the, do they have integrity? Do they have a bend for teamwork? Do they have a, a high level of productivity? Because I wanna take this out of there. Because we know when that person walks in, if we don't do the interview right, this is what we get a few minutes or a few weeks later. We get crazy one down there. You see it all the time. When my daughter turned 18 a few years ago, she went to apply to be a host. She's 18, that's like the thing to do. So she goes to apply to be a host at a Mexican food restaurant outside of Dallas. These geniuses hire somebody that's never worked in the restaurant industry before. And first day, no orientation, no training, her first day, four to close, May the 5th. What is May the 5th in the Mexican food world? Cinco de Mayo, how long do you think she lasted? May the 5th, one day. Now maybe that's all they needed, I don't know. But when you make a poor hiring decision like that because you just do this and then you don't follow up with all the training, it doesn't work. Your interview questions need to be very behavior based. Role play, go see them if they're working somewhere else, go scout them just like the NFL teams do with college players. I actually, if they're not working somewhere else, I let them come in and mystery shop us, come in to eat for free, because I learned this from Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese looks like fun until you say, hey, come in, on, you wanna work here? Sure, come in on a Saturday. And then they, they come back for the second interview and they go, oh my God, is it really this, there's really this many kids in here? Uh, yeah. I wanna paint the picture for what it's like. As an example for Ikea, has anybody ever been to Ikea furniture? Here's a perfect way to get the point across about being behavior-based interviews. Chick-fil-A teaches our managers to knock a pen off the table to see if the person picks it up. Because if they don't bend over to pick it up, what do they not have? They do not have that service DNA at all. Don't ask hypothetical questions in an interview and make sure everything's behavior based. That's why I rewind all the way to what are the traits that a great server has? What are the traits that a great cook has? Oh, you, you worked at restaurant XYZ? Hey, let's go back in the kitchen. Show me what you can do. That's a lot different than, can you cook this? Yes. Can you cook that? Yes. It would be like going to the NFL Combine last week in Indianapolis and the, the scout saying, hey, how fast do you run the 40? 4-3? Okay, check. Hey, how many times can you bench press 4, 225? 27? Okay, check. When we ask questions like that and don't ask for the behavior, good luck. Or we ask the questions hypothetically. Hey, if you saw somebody steal, you know, maybe you're a cashier and they gave some free food to their friend. If you saw that, what would you do? What's the employee gonna tell you, the applicant gonna tell you? They're gonna tell you exactly what you wanna hear. Hey, have you seen somebody when you're a cashier give their, their food to their friends for free? Yeah, what'd you do? Nothing, that's what you're gonna get. Make your, be, your interviews behavior-based. Otherwise, you're not gonna be successful. Now let's switch gears now to training. Because again, if you put a clean shirt in the dirty laundry, what happens to the clean shirt? It smells. Hiring is actually the last thing you should do. You should fix your current staff, pull the weeds, get rid of the C players, train your staff up, get your culture fixed, then let's go bring some people in. Because if you bring clean shirts into the dirty laundry, 
All you're going to have is more dirty shirts. You've got to do this kind of backwards from what you're thinking. Let's talk about training. In its simplest terms, this is what I learned from pals. It's an ad from, for GMC Trucks, and it says, amateurs practice until they get it right, pros practice until they can't get it wrong. We probably don't train our employees good enough. We just train the basics, give them a couple shifts if we're lucky, and we throw them out there. And then we hope they learn the rest on the job. When you work at PALS, because they're running 200 cars an hour through a drive-through, they can't learn anything more than one thing. And they have to get so good at it so quickly because they'll, they'll knock the train off the tracks. Train your employees so well they can't get it wrong. Our business is all about speed and accuracy with a dose of hospitality. If we have to think, we're slow. If we have to think, we make mistakes. Train your people so well they can't get it wrong. Now, I, I could get into all the thing about training the younger generation and videos. What I would tell you is I'm a franchisee. I'm a, I'm a business owner, similar to everybody in this room. I had to do it on the cheap first. There are a lot of vendor materials out there that are available. If you're a Coca-Cola client, Jim Sullivan and I wrote a thing called Tips for Better Tips. If I teach my staff members how to make more money when they work here, what's it going to be like to work for me? If I, if I put up a sign after I leave this, the, the show for a couple days and it says, mandatory employee meeting Thursday at 10 o'clock, what's the, what's the attitude going to be like with those servers? Ugh. But instead, if the message says, who wants a $5,000 raise? Show up Thursday at 10 o'clock. Because if I can teach my servers how to make more money, they're going to be less likely to go somewhere else. Cornell, if you just Google Cornell Mega Tips, they did, there's a PDF, you can download it for free. There's 14 behaviors, not every behavior is right for every restaurant, but there's 14 behaviors that are proven to get the guests to tip more. If you have a full service restaurant, teach your servers how to make more money. They're not going to go anywhere else. Oh, hint, by the way, if the guests are tipping more, what's probably happened to the level of service those guests are receiving? They're going up. You're getting fives. You're helping your own business as well. There's one, A1 did it. If you just Google the A1 piece, they're out there. Coca-Cola's done stuff on hiring. I'm sure Pepsi and all these other vendors have. I would bet the Wisconsin Restaurant Association. I would bet the food distributors that are downstairs, whoever they are in this area, Reinhardt, Gordon, Cisco, U.S. Foods, they all have free training materials for you all. Go get them. Don't reinvent the wheel. The next thing I would urge is to train people so well they can't get it wrong. I learned this from Powell's. We make flashcards. Some of them are scenario based. Greet me as if I'm a guest that you don't know. Greet me as if I'm a guest that you do know. Greet me as I'm a first timer. Some of them are knowledge based so they don't have to think. I had to adapt to my old school methods. I learned how to multiply in the third grade with flashcards. There's apps for it. We use these during the lulls. We use these for our managers who don't know what to do on a pre-shift meeting. So we get the flashcards out and we train and we train and we train and we train every day to talk about what we need to do. We have QR codes. These QR codes could be the videos. I guarantee if you saw Eric Chester, he's probably got videos on YouTube. If you want to take part of what he said, just make a QR code or a link that goes to his YouTube. All these great speakers have one minute video clips. Just make the QR code go there. It's simple, I can tell you how to do it after the session's over. Awesome video e-learning materials for free. All you have to do is create a little QR code. In our case, that says P3 accuracy, P3 speed. That's one of my positions. If I have accuracy issues or if I have speed issues, everybody clocks in and watches that, that clip, that one minute clip for that day, because we need to get better on speed or we need to get better on accuracy or whatever the case may be. We're always tweaking the knobs because we want people to perform better and better. We call it getting ripped, not, not like drunk ripped, but think about workout ripped, and it stands for Rapid Improvement Program. So it's Monday morning. I'm not in my seven restaurants. I'm here. They think I'm having fun. My, re my restaurant managers are reviewing our sales, our profits, and our service scores from last week, and they are making a Rapid Improvement Program for this week. It's different in every restaurant. This one may have a little bit of a labor issue. This one may have a food cost issue. This one may have a service issue on hospitality or friendly. We look at the data and then we have those links, whether it's flashcards or QR codes, to get better and fix what that restaurant needs to fix. Think about how you can apply that because we're trying to ultimately become so ripped that we're, we're the place to go. 
So that's kind of the training. The last piece is, is on rewards, and I, I know you guys love sitting down, uh, but I want everybody just kind of stand up and find a partner real quick, okay? Just, just stand up and find a partner. Pick somebody to be player A and somebody to be player B, okay? All right, all right, hold on. Okay, let me do a little experiment. We are in the service industry, so theoretically, if I say pick somebody to be player A and somebody to be player B, those of us with a service gene should say, oh, you go ahead and be A. How many of you all are like, I'm A, I'm A? Okay, yeah. Okay, all my A, who are my A players? Okay, there should be an, one person from, okay, so player A. Player, player A and player A only make a fist at waist level of player B. Player A only make the fist at waist level of player B, okay? Player B, you should be the other person in the relationship there, okay? Player B, you, your job is to get the fist open in 15 seconds, go. Okay, time's up, time's up. If you did not get the fist open, both of you sit down. If you did not get the fist open, both of you sit down. Okay, what did you all do to get the fist open? You shook, it, you, you shook his hand. You offered a handshake. Okay, great, what did you all do over here? I distracted her by pushing my thumb against her arm. So you made it really painful. What did you all do up here, ladies? <laughs> Same thing, what did you all do? You tickled her. Okay, the sexual harassment lawsuits, uh, breakouts after this, you two need to go. Anybody do anything different? What did you do? You asked him. Oh, duh, okay, what did you do? Ask anybody else do anything different? You gave him money. Okay, so everybody sit down real quick. So, here's the analogy of this exercise. Player A, player A, you were the employee. You have the, if we've hired a good person, you have the desired behavior in the palm of your hand, player A. Player B, you were the manager. What do most managers do? to try and get the behavior out of the employee. They force it. What happened, player A, when player B was trying to force your hand open? What were you doing? You were resisting. It made it a little more difficult, right? What works? Step number one, ask. Bill Clinton said, has nothing to do with the blue dress. Bill Clinton said, their good idea is better than our great idea. So as an example, when I did that system, that guest check coding thing way back when, we went to all the servers and didn't say, hey, here's what we're gonna do. We went and said, look, we need to improve service. What do we need to do? And they came up with everything, because they said, oh, you know what, I wish the host would talk to them a little bit and understand this and, and those kind of things. We actually started really simple and basic with that system. We just gave the hosts different colored napkins if they were a first time guest or a returning guest. We started easy. Now, who came up with that idea? The employees did. Are they gonna argue with that idea? If I came to that client and said, here, do this, what are they gonna say? Oh, that's stupid. Let them come up with the solution. Now, please don't misunderstand what I am saying here. I am not saying, please come in on time. Please wear your uniform. Please be nice to the guests. That's a management problem if you can't get the employees to do this. I'm talking about asking them to do change above and beyond. How can we lower food costs? How can we improve cook times? How can we improve our service scores? Let them come up with it. You did the handshake example, so that would make a fist. So as, a, as an analogy, it's lead by example. Hey, my name's TJ and you are? Make, make a fist. Make a fist. Stop, okay, make a fist. Give me a high five. Okay, that's a low five, but it's okay. You're... Lead by example. If you want the employees to demonstrate the right behaviors, whether it's sales, service, whatever it is, lead by example. The C players don't have this in their DNA. Somebody offered them money. I'll talk about that in just a second. Please don't tickle your employees. Okay, please don't tickle your employees. You can force the behavior out of them, but they're gonna make you pay the minute you walk away. So here's a couple incentive ideas. What I learned a long time ago is the most effective incentive is the one that employee wants. So we put these cards into our system. Smart Restaurant Group, it's, just, it's an acronym for our investors' names. We just give out these cards that are worth a quarter. The managers can give out the cards for above and beyond behaviors. The employees can save them for whatever they want and redeem them whenever they want. Because I used to say, save 20 and you can get a $5 Starbucks card. Well, you know what? I don't drink coffee. Okay, that doesn't motivate me whatsoever. Oh, I want a round of golf. That motivates like none of my employees. The most effective incentive is the one they want. A&W in Canada uses poker chips are worth a dollar. 
The employees can save them for whatever they want, whenever they want. Here's the, here's the way I'll show you how this works. So I have six employees that I need to run a busy lunch shift. 11.30, what's your name, Matthew? Matthew calls in sick, 11.30. Yeah, right? What are the five employees thinking right now at 11.30, right as I'm about to move into my lunch rush? Ugh. What happens to my guest service that day? Goes downhill. They're, they know they have to work harder. He gets a day off, my service suffers, my employees suffer. So here's what I do. Hey, 11.30, Matthew just called off. Okay, I know, you guys got it, I know. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give everybody four smart cards an hour. So basically you're gonna get a dollar hour and extra. Two conditions, no mistakes, nothing goes over our standard service times. Every hour you do that, you get an extra dollar. Now, do the math here. If he makes $10 an hour and doesn't show up, I as a business owner save $10. I'm choosing to share $5 an hour back with my staff. What do you think happens on that shift for my guest service that day? Nail it. I saved 10, I spent five, I'm five ahead, they're collectively five ahead. He got to enjoy a day off. What are these five employees gonna tell Matthew tomorrow? Stay home. <laughs> what did I learn as a business owner? How many people do I need to run a busy lunch? Five rock stars, not six. Work expands or contracts to fill the time allotted. They'll make six people fill it up. That's how we use the cards. Somebody does a great uh, gesture with a guest or something like that, they get mentioned in a survey, that's how they earn the cards. If I need to lower food cost, that's how they get their points, they get their cards. We also do fraction of the action. You could do this in the kitchen to fix your costs. You could do it in the bar to fix your liquor costs. I use this to drive catering sales. I give any employee 10% of any order they get. So Sarah down there in the middle, she calls me one day, says, hey, I just saw the little one minute sales radar video that you wanted us to watch that talks about connecting to the guest. Every guest is a sales opportunity. I saw a guest with a lanyard walk in. I went over and talked to him because they worked for a school district and boom, I got a $2,950 order. Wow, that's cool. I got to write her a check for $295. My business partner says, hey, go get the big Happy Gilmore check. Let's, let's take a picture and we'll send this out to our staff because I, you know, I think some people re don't realize. So I go over to Sarah, we have the $295, I get the big Happy Gilmore check. By the way, I'm a cheap business owner too. That's the dry erase check, $44. It's the same check in every picture, okay? <laughs> Bigcheck.com, $44. So we, we take the check, we take the picture. I thought the, ma the magic was in the money. What does she say to me? She says, can you give me the picture? I said, what the hell do you want the picture for? I just gave you $300 because I'm old. What does a 20-year-old want a picture for? Instagram, Instagram Snapchat, then with their bragging montage. I said, okay, deal. So now can I, I'll give you the picture, but will you be in my recruitment ads? Because now my recruitment ads say incentive pay. I can't compete with Chick-fil-A on money, but I can compete and give incentive pay. That's my hook. That's the bait that I have on the hook. Charles Barkley, though, eloquently said a couple years ago during the slam dunk contest, Gatorade doesn't help people that suck, okay? <laughs> what that means for us is incentives will never get the wrong person to do the right thing. Those C players, you could put all the motivation in the world, they will never change. The incentives and the systems that I talked about earlier will make the B players B plus, it'll make your A players A plus. That's where you're gonna make the money. It's not gonna change the C players. Gatorade doesn't help people that suck. So here's my recap, and as we wind up, because I know I'm out of time, I'll leave my email here on the site. Get rid of the C's, because the Gatorade doesn't help. You have to know what the DNA is of each of those positions that you have in your restaurant, the skills to be successful, and go out there and find those people. You gotta know where to find them, you gotta start using social recruiting, and you have to train and communicate at a whole different level. This generation doesn't wanna know information, they just wanna know where to find it. You have to make your training like that. You have to communicate with them in their language. That's texting and maybe you can even have an app. There's so many things that you can do. You gotta reward the performers. So to kind of wrap this all up, if you need the notes, just send me an email there. Just say you want the, the Midwest handouts. Everybody just make the okay sign real quick. I'm gonna show you the magic formula. Everybody make the okay sign. Gradually bend your elbow, bring it toward your face and put it on your chin. Now what did I say? Put it on your... And what are most of you doing? You're doing, it doesn't matter what you say. It only matters what you do. 
So everybody lean in, get up on the edge of your chairs. Let's last, last thing and I'm gonna bust you out of here. First of all, fill out your survey so they may invite me to come back. But everybody get on the edge of your seat. You're waiting for that silver bullet. There really is no silver bullet, but the, the, if you leave there and somebody says, hey, how was TJ's seminar? You can say, he had me on the edge of my seat. All right, I'll stick around if you have any questions. Thank you guys, enjoy the rest of the show.